This video and others like it are made possible thanks to the generous support of my Go Make Things members. A recurring membership helps me create more videos like this and also get you some cool perks. Join or learn more at gomakethings.com slash join. Hello, hello, hello. This is Chris Ferdinandi from gomakethings.com. And today we are looking at four different ways to take an array and convert it into HTML and inject it into the DOM. So um, I have just by way of example here, I have an unordered list a bulleted list, if you'd prefer, which I've grabbed with the query selector method and assigned to the list variable. And I also have an array of wizards, Merlin, Ursula, Gandalf, and Radagast. And I want to take this array and convert each wizard in it into a list item, which I then inject into my unordered list. So when we're done, it should look like this, uh, where you've got all of our wizards displayed in the DOM. Uh, in order to do that, there are a few different ways that you can approach it. Um, I'm going to show you all the different ones. I'm also going to tell you which one is my favorite, and we'll talk a little bit about which approach you should use. Um, so let's start with the one that um, I've found most of my beginner students tend to gravitate towards, the one that most people find the easiest to wrap their head around and reason about, and that is using a loop and string concatenation. So. Uh, we start by defining an HTML string, and we start with just an empty string as that initial value. And then we loop through each wizard. Uh, in this case, I'm using a for of loop to loop through each of my wizards. And I append a list item with the wizard name as an HTML string. Uh, so at this point, we have a string that should have each of the wizards wrapped in a list item um, as part of that string. And then I can use the inner HTML property to append that string to the DOM and it gets converted into HTML elements and rendered properly. Um, I'm using for of here, but this would work just as well if you were using like array for each or something like that. It's really a matter of preference. There's no right method to use for this. Um, you could even use like an old school for loop, um, although they are super annoying to write, so I don't necessarily recommend it. Um, the most important thing about this approach is what you don't want to do, that I sometimes see folks do, especially early on, is append directly into the DOM using the inner HTML property on each loop. So if I jump back over for a second, you'll see this works, but what ends up happening is on each loop, we update the DOM and a repaint happens in the browser. So if you have a very large list of items, this can get really expensive from a performance perspective for the browser to do. So uh, what I recommend is you, you run through your whole loop, you create your string, and then when you're done with it, you append the entire thing into the DOM. That way it only happens once, there's one repaint, it's a lot more performant. So, that's one approach. This is the one that I think most beginners find the easiest to read because you're doing a thing, you're adding to the thing, and then you're injecting the thing. So it's really, really clear. Uh, the approach I prefer that some beginners find a little less readable, but I tend to really, really enjoy is using the array map and array join methods together. So um, here I've got my list, I've got my array, uh, and the array map method loops through each item in an array and whatever you return out of it gets appended to a new array at that exact same index. So I'm looping through my wizards array and for each item in that array, I am creating an HTML string with a list item and the wizard name. And so when this is done running, I will have a new array where at index zero, I will have list item Merlin, at index one, I'll have list item Ursula and so on. And then we can use the array join method to take each of those HTML strings that's in the array and join them into a string. Uh, and because the array map method is creating an array, we can chain our methods here. So we get an array out, we join that array, and then we can assign that returned joined string to the list inner HTML property to render it into the UI. So what would have been a couple of steps we can do, and it's technically still a couple of steps. We're creating a new array and then joining it and then assigning it. But from a written perspective, it all happens in one fell swoop. Um, so if we jump over, you can see 
we get the same exact outcome. Um, and if we were to add, um, you know, add a new array, let's just say Todd, right? There we go. Um, what I like about this approach is I personally find it nice and short and sweet and easy to read. What some folks find confusing about it is if you're not overly familiar with array map or array join, um, or you're just kind of looking at it, it can take a little bit more brain processing to figure out what's going on here. So this is my favorite approach, but if you find it hard to read, there is absolutely nothing wrong with four of and append. It's going to get you to the same exact place. It's going to be equally performant, probably more so. Um, so there's really no, no wrong option between these two. One other option that you can use, um, again, using some sort of loop, could be four of, could be array for each, whatever. Um, technically, you could even use this approach with array map, although I don't recommend it. Um, but what you're effectively doing is you're looping through each wizard. You're using the document create element method to create a new list item. And then inside that list item, you are assigning the wizard as text content and then you append it into the UI. Um, and so if we jump over here, you can see we get the same exact outcome. Once again, if I were to add my esteemed wizard Todd to the mix, that gets added, that shows up. Um, so this approach, um, what makes this approach potentially superior to the previous two we looked at is its use of text content instead of inner HTML. So depending on where you got this data from, like here I've hard coded it, but let's say you got it back from an API or some user provided inputs. Um, there is a risk of a cross-site scripting attack where someone could, um, using inner HTML, cause some content that shouldn't be there to render and run some additional JavaScript that can then be used to attack your site. Inner HTML is a lot more prone to that. When you inject content with text content, any of the HTML that will allow an attack like that to happen usually gets stripped out, um, which makes it a lot safer. So let me actually, I guess, give you an example here. So let's say um, I, I had some returned value that was image source equals, we're gonna use, we're gonna use a source that can't possibly exist. And then we're gonna say on error equals console log uh, hacked, right? Or actually let's not even do console log. Let's do an alert. So that pops up, right? Um, here we go. So this should work. So here you can see I've actually caused some JavaScript to be run with my data. If I were to try this with the, um, the append method here, wrong window, sorry. What ends up happening is because we're not using inner HTML, only the text shows. And so no JavaScript ever actually runs. So if you're using third-party data, user-created data, this approach is a lot safer, but you may have noticed kind of a flaw with this. We are appending a new item on every loop and that is going to cause a, um, a new render to happen. Um, and, or a repaint rather to happen in the browser. So if you have large lists, this can also be really expensive from a performance perspective. Fortunately, there's one way that we can work around that. And that is to use document fragments. Uh, so with this approach, you create a fragment. This is a, um, uh, like a non-specific chunk of code. Uh, if you've ever worked with react, they have the concept of fragments too. It comes from old school vanilla JavaScript. This has been around forever, but we create a fragment. Um, so it's a, like basically a non, non real element that's going to hold a bunch of other HTML. Um, and on each of our loops, instead of appending our content into the list itself, we append it into the fragment. And then when we're done, we append the entire fragment into our list. Uh, and if we jump over, you can see we get the same exact result. Um, let's try doing a cross-site scripting attack against ourselves, just so I can show you how uh, that output is the same as well, except we only render once. The entire list of items gets rendered into the UI at once. There's a single repaint, so it's a lot more performant. Um, so just to recap, if you have control over the list, you're sure it's safe. Um, I really like 
array map and array join, but a for loop and string concatenation is going to work just as well. If you're using third party data or, you know, some content where you're not sure of its safety, um, user generated content, something like that, I would instead recommend, um, using the create element and text content properties to do this. Um, but use it with a document fragment. That way you are not negatively impacting performance. Uh, that's it for this week. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about this, please uh, leave a comment down below. Um, if you have ideas for future videos you'd like to see me create, mention those down in the comments as well. Um, and all the usual things, subscribe, uh, give it a thumbs up, bell, share it with friends, all that good stuff. Helps the channel grow. I really appreciate it. And uh, I will see you next time. Cheers. I recently decided to stop selling expensive courses that most folks can only afford with a corporate training budget and focus on creating more excellent free content, including YouTube videos like this one. A recurring Go Make Things membership helps me create more videos like this and also gets you some cool perks like access to my private Discord community and my personal collection of courses, guides, and code snippets. There are a range of membership levels available and they all get the same stuff. Even $3 a month helps keep this channel going. You can join or learn more at gomakethings.com slash join.